resistors. So here at this point, uh, now we want to solve for the voltage across this branch right here. Since these two are in parallel, they have the same voltage across them. So I can, since, since I'm only worried about the voltage across these guys, I don't have to worry about anything over here. And I already know what the voltage across these guys is because I solved for it with, with the voltage across R23, which that's what these two are. It's just they're expanded. So since I know what the voltage across these two guys is, I can rewrite the circuit and I can just, if I wanted to, I can just chop it right here and then just, and then just uh, only work with this. So I rewrote the circuit by just chopping off this side right here. And I left R2 just as a reference so you could see where, where I'm chopping, the, chopping it at. And I'm replacing all of these three with just the voltage that these guys are feeling. So that's this voltage is actually the voltage that's applied across here. And that's what this represents. So now at this point, I, can, I know what the voltage across this guy is. So I can just continue to further expand this guy. Now this RS2 actually is a representation of R3 and RP2. And did I bring that? No, I didn't. So we have R2 and R3 and RP2. So RP2 is a representation of many resistors. So if I go up here, I can show you what that is. So here's R2 and R3, and then I cut these out completely. And this is what RP2 stands for, all of these guys. Just all of these combined into RP2, which would be right here, which is all of these guys. So let's go back down to R. Oh, where is it? Yep, there it is, RP2. So as you can see, here's RP2, and this is the voltage I want to cross it. So if I want to, I could just, uh, I could say, well, look, this voltage is where I can, anywhere along this line, and if I put my lead, one lead here and one lead here, I'll feel this voltage, which means this, um, this branch and this branch are actually in parallel. So R2 is going to feel the full 41.308 volts. And from here to here, it's also going to get uh, the full 41.308 volts. Uh, this is going to get some of it, and this is going to get some of it. So if you combine these two, they're going to add up to this amount of voltage. So at this point, I can just say, well, since I know these guys are going to get that full amount, I could just ignore this one and just completely take it out of the circuit, which is what I do here. And then at this point, I say, okay, well, now that I know that from here to here is this voltage, I just want to know what the voltage across RP2 is. So in order to solve for that, I use again the voltage the voltage divider rule. So just put this resistance here and, and divide that by the total resistance. So R3 plus RP2. And you're gonna multiply it by this whole voltage. So you're gonna multiply that across because this is just, it's just a ratio of how much uh, voltage this guy gets. So and, and by multiplying it, you should see that this is less than this one. So the voltage on this one, the voltage that this resistor drops is gonna be less than this. So we, we, uh, we put those values in here and put the 142.86 that's up here. And then you're gonna add these two down here and you're gonna multiply by the voltage, by this voltage, which is gonna give you a total of 17.21 volts. 17.21 volts across RP2. And here we have the representation of it. Uh, here is the voltage across RP2, which is 17.21 volts. And here's RP2. So I'm just saying, I'm saying, look, I'm just gonna, I only care about this part right here. I don't care about this part anymore. So I'm just gonna say, this is the voltage across it and I'm gonna redraw it like this because I can. So I'm just gonna say, look, this is the amount of voltage that's across this resistor. Of course, this re resistor RP2 is actually, a, uh, a, it's a bunch of resistors that I've combined into here. And, and, I, and I actually brought the, I, I redrew the circuit right here for you so you could see that RP2 is actually this whole chain of resistors. It's all of this right here. We already, uh, and, and as we're going, we're constantly going this way, just until we get to the voltage across uh, R7. So here at this point, we can just come down here and rewrite it. So uh, RS1, is actually this whole chain of resistors right here. Uh, it's R5, R6, and R7. That's what RS1 represents. Uh, and 
our 4 is right there. So and here's the 17.21 volts, which is felt across from this this point right here down to right here. So if you put a, one of your leads here and the other lead here, and you cut this part off, you would actually feel this voltage. So um, RS1 and R4, they're actually in parallel. And RS1 is just a representation of R7, R6, and R5. And if you add these, this one and these two, you're going to get a resistance of 500 ohms. Um, now let's go down a little bit. And since we know that they're, that these two are in parallel, that means that this 17.21 volts is just felt across here and felt across here. So if I wanted to, I could draw the circuit without the R4 because it just doesn't matter right now. But just because I rewrote it like this, and I re I redrew the RS1. Earlier I told you that RS1 is a representation of R5 and of these two resistors, but they're in parallel. So I call these two resistors in the other video, I called them RP1 because it's the first. It, it was the very first step I took. So I made these two in parallel. So since these are the first resistors I put in parallel, I called them RP1, as in resistors resistors in parallel, the first one for for one. So here's RP1, and you get 250 volts after you after you work them both out because both of these were actually 500 ohms, or they are 500 ohms. Um, <coughs> so here, uh, this circuit is exactly the same as this one, except the RS1 I expanded it to R5 and RP1. So I'm drawing you what it actually what RS1 actually looks like. So at this point, all I need is the voltage across RP1. And since earlier I had mentioned that I really don't need this in here because this feels a 17.21 volts, and so does this branch. So uh, you could just treat this as a voltage divider and just say, okay, so I'm going to put this one up top here, and I'm going to put, and I'm going to divide this resistor or this resistor by this plus this because you only want the voltage on this branch. So, and you're going to multiply it by this voltage. Uh, I don't know why I put RP2 here, but it shouldn't be RP2, it should be RP1. Uh, no, no, that should be RP2. I just, I, I shouldn't have written that right there, sorry. That's incorrect. This should be, uh, hold on a second. This really should be RP2. Yeah, so that's correct. Um, okay, so now let's see. Okay, so here you're going to multiply this the this right here, which is our the resistor the resistor P1 divided by R5 plus RP1, which it's this divided by this plus this times this voltage which that's how you get the voltage on RP1. And that's what I did right here. Since uh, RP1 is 200, 250 ohm, ohms, R5 is 250 ohms, you just plug them in, and you're going to multiply them times the 17.21, which is going to give you the voltage of uh, 8.6 ohms. And this right here is actually this right here, RP6 and 7. So that's how we solve for this one. I, I know it might seem a little bit confusing because this is the second uh, it's the second video and I think in order for you to really for this to make sense you need to look at the first video and then you'll you'll see how we started off with these two and then we we combined them and we added this one to it because it, you know, it would be in series and then after we did that that made this whole chain of resistors in parallel with this one and then we, mo we combined the, this one with these three which made it one resistor, which all of a sudden then you just had a resistor here and this resistor, so then we added those in series, or this adds with these in series, and then that makes uh, the new resistor uh, in parallel with R2. And then at that point, that's where you get the, the final, that's where you get the, oh gosh, you get the, this circuit, hold on. That's when you get this circuit, RP3. But, uh, and. But that's, that's the final uh, circuit that you would get after you combine all of these. 
Uh, and you could even take it further by combining all three of these, and then you just get one resistor here. 